This is Nancy Russell type of weather because she always liked to say, you know, it's not just the blue skies. It's, uh, it's so much else about the gorge. And I am hoping that by the end of this, uh, some speaker up here will say some words that creates uh, a divine parting of the skies. So we are gathered here today to celebrate a view, a vision, and a visionary. Three decades ago, few people had heard of Cape Horn. There was no plan for an overlook like this. There was no plan for a trail. There was only a plan for a 16 lot subdivision. And this was in 1983. And Friends of the Columbia Gorge founder, Nancy Russell, was introduced to this proposed Rimview Estates. Now because the National Scenic Area was not in place, um, there was no legal way to stop the subdivision. So Nancy got creative. She talked with her husband, Bruce, and they decided that they would take out a $300,000 loan from a bank. And they gave that as a no-interest loan to Trust for Public Land. Trust for Public Land came in and bought 12 of the 16 lots. The Forest Service then came in and bought those lots from uh, Trust for Public Land after the Scenic Area Act passed. And it set the wheels in motion for 25 years of acquisition, and it's created a block of over a thousand acres of public land right here. There was a 5,500 square foot house right up where these folks are standing up top at the top, and it was built before the act, so the scenic standards really didn't apply. Now this property went out for sale in 2005, and friends of the Columbia Gorge had just created a land trust, and we made it our first purchase. Now, the Forest Service was very interested in this property because it was surrounded by public land, but they were only interested as, as bare land, and they didn't have the funds to build the overlook. So Friends of the Columbia Gorge launched the campaign for Cape Horn to raise over $4 million to secure the funding to eventually purchase this property, the property where your cars are parked, uh, the cost to remove the two houses, and the cost to build an overlook here. And many of the generous donors who contributed to that $4 million campaign are here today, as well as those who helped raise the money. It was a huge team effort. And I first of all, I want to thank everybody who contributed or helped raise money or was involved in making this a reality. So thanks. Uh, first off, we're, we're very uh, grateful to have Oregon's two senators. Now, 25 years ago, Washington and Oregon's congressional delegations voted to create the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area. And by doing that, they agreed that the Columbia Gorge should really be managed as one, and that the Columbia River's most beautiful stretch should join rather than divide the two states. So I think it's very fitting that at this Washington viewpoint, we have Oregon Senators here to join us today. And the first I'd like to ask speak is Senator Ron Wyden. The real question was how we were going to secure the essential protection. Aubrey remembers some of this uh, as well. Was it going to be a park, for example? There was a lot of interest in the past. And some people said it ought to be a wilderness area. And Nancy Russell, with that wonderful, cheerful persistence, always said, just make sure you protect it. And that really, for so many of us, symbolized the discussion. Because as the debate went forward, and of course, Senator Hatfield guided all of this, we knew where we wanted to end up. And that was, we wanted federal recognition for this treasure, and we wanted to put it off limits forever to anything that would despoil it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have delivered on that vision. Thank you, Senator Wyden. Um, 
Our next speaker is uh, Oregon's other senator, Jeff Merkley, joined the Senate in 2008, and I believe one of the first laws he signed was the Gorge Wilderness Bill. All of this would be very different today if developments like the Rimview Estates were covering the Columbia Gorge. But because of Nancy Russell and her vision and her passion, and because of all of you who joined in this battle, we don't have a Columbia Gorge covered by Rimview Estates. And it's an extraordinary accomplishment. My thanks go to the Aubrey family. Uh, they go to all of you who have been so passionate about this vision of saving and protecting the Columbia Gorge for future generations. We still have work ahead of us. I look forward to being a partner in that work, and thank you very much. I cannot overstate the importance of what the U.S. Forest Service has done here. Uh, it started in the 1980s with what I would call courageous acquisitions of property, including the ones at Rimview Estate. In the last several years, uh, once this property was purchased, they directed significant staff energy into the planning process for the trail. Uh, they pulled local residents into the process in a way that I've never seen. And they, this summer and last summer, they've been leading work crews to redesign the trails. And Forest Service staff even wrote grants uh, to secure federal highway administration funds to uh, build the two highway underpasses that will be part of this trail in the future. And for all these things, we owe a debt of gratitude uh, to our next speaker, and that's the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area Manager, Dan Harkenrider. I had an opportunity very early on in my tenure as area manager to visit with Nancy in the field. She showed me a few of her prized acquisitions, including a number of the parcels here at Cape Horn. And she passionately described the vision for the future of those parcels. In all of that discussion, she was able to work into the discussion a few interrogatories for me <laughs> concerning what my land ethic was and whether I understood the conservation responsibilities that was handed to me. <laughs> felt that I was being interviewed for the position that I held. <laughs> In all of those inquiries, Nancy showed grace, a sense of humor, and patience. And I suspect she knew fully well that eventually I would agree with her point of view. <laughs> Over the years, on those rare occasions when Nancy and I were able to get into the field again, I felt fortunate to be able to listen to her describing what could be the world of possibilities. And it was on those occasions that I began to better understand what it means to be passionately dedicated to improving the world in which we live. Clearly, Nancy and I had disagreements and a few debates. But in all of those conversations, she was always kind, respectful, and oh, so very persistent in ensuring that I understood her point of view. <laughs> so it goes without saying that this Cape Horn landscape, which was Nancy's rallying cry for protection in the gorge, is deserving of being dedicated to her today. I envision a time, probably very soon, when this viewpoint will be the second most photographed point within the National Scenic Area. And Dan mentioned the Cape Horn Conservancy. It was really at that critical conjunction a couple years ago that a group of local citizens came together to create the Cape Horn Conservancy. And I would say that the future of this trail really rests with that group and its leader, Teresa Robbins. Well, sadly, I never had the honor of meeting Nancy Russell personally. I almost feel as though I know her. Obviously, she was a woman of great character and integrity, of enormous strength and vision. A woman for whom I have a deep respect, and I'm sure would have liked immensely. This incredible overlook seems truly a fitting tribute. And we of the Cape Horn Conservancy are so excited that it graces the Cape Horn Trail. 
saw a quote just the other day. Anyone can take the helm in calm seas. Certainly, Nancy Russell prevailed in rough seas. I fear we as a nation are in for a bit of an extended storm. Given the current economic status and climate, this, this exceptional collaboration with the active, intelligent involvement of multiple nonprofit organizations and government agencies, this presents an ideal model of how it is still possible to achieve great and beautiful legacies for all to enjoy. In this 25th year since the establishment of the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area, I'm heartened by this kind of shared vision and energetic cooperation. Boy, Dan, I hope you're training that next fellow that's coming in. Or whatever that's coming in. <laughs> While Nancy Russell always had a vision for a park up here, it was in the mid-90s that local resident Dan Huntington envisioned a trail at Cape Horn. And over the years, he sold Nancy Russell and me on that vision. Well, we can thank the Forest Service for executing an excellent plan. It was, as we all know, Nancy Russell who set the wheels in motion and kept those wheels turning right up to her final days. I'd like to tell a little story about Nancy. Unlike large agencies, Nancy's could make decisions very quickly. For example, in 2002, I gave Nancy a call. The former site of a tavern, an ugly gravel strip next to the highway was on the market. I thought it would make a good trailhead. To others, it looked like a convenient place to dump garbage into a hole covered by blackberries. I called Nancy up and I asked her to buy it. She didn't visit the property. She didn't need any more information. She authorized me at once to negotiate for its purchase. A few years later, Sweeney County commissioners recognized that it would be a good trailhead and transit stop, and they purchased it, purchased it from her. 25 years ago, the rim of the gorge between Washougal and Stevenson was unprotected. It was destined for clear cuts and view home sites. The best views would inevitably become the exclusive domain of those privileged enough to afford the price tag. Thanks to the vision, passion, and generosity of people like Nancy Russell and massive acquisitions of land by the Forest Service, that future has been avoided. Understand that the final pieces of this vision would not have happened without the hard work of Nancy's son, Aubrey. Aubrey's the president of the Friends of the Columbia Gorge Land Trust. And I remember the day that we came up here with the trustees to make the decision whether we were going to buy the property. And if you thought it was socked in a little while ago, when the trustees were brought up here, it was pouring. You couldn't see five feet in front of you. And Aubrey and I were saying, you got to trust us. It's a great view. Just thank you to everyone. This is a wonderful tribute to mom. I do want to uh, give a special thanks to the, to the U.S. Senators who are here today. And uh, I'm so glad the view is cleared a little bit, and I hope you'll come back on a sunny day and experience more of this beautiful spot. And when you come back, um, I want you to know that it'll be okay if you feel just a little bit jealous of your colleagues who represent Washington State. <laughs> because it's a magnificent trail. Uh, and looking back over uh, the years to the early days of her gorge efforts, uh, said, I could never have imagined that anyone would not want to protect the Columbia Gorge. And to her surprise, <clears throat> there were people who were opposed to, to this effort. And uh, it was one of the most uh, divisive and hostile and longest land use battles of, uh, of our era. And mom wasn't someone who had a whole lot of experience in politics or uh, in nonprofit work or in public speaking. Um, but uh, she had just a ferocious taste for hard work, and um, she loved a little bit of competition, and she really didn't know how to back down, and especially when uh, she knew that she was doing the right thing, and there were so many good people, and they're here today in large part, um, so many good people who shared that conviction that she was doing the right thing to give the Gorge uh, real protection. Mom would, would recognize that this is a place, it's in the very finest tradition of those great 
tasteful public uh, projects um, which uh, seek, in the words of, of Samuel Lancaster, to not mar what God has put here. And um, it really is, I think, this, I mean, I, I'm seeing it today for the first time, and I think it's every bit as much uh, an example of that poetry in stone as, as Samuel Lancaster's highway. It's really a tremendous accomplishment, and I think we'll move. it's moving. And I get the view, too, from here, so it's especially moving for me. But we, uh, we, brought, we brought her from the ambulance and, and put her on a, a concrete pad where the, uh, the garage had been from um, where the house had been. And uh, mom, you know, looked across the site where previously walls had risen to block the view out the gorge to the east. And she sat there. And I asked her, so mom, what do you think? And she said, uh, one day this will be a great public park. And mom, of course, um, I think would be surprised that that one day has, has come so soon. Um, after a few moments up above when we were three, three years ago, we carried mom down um, around the, the side of the house and brought her to this very spot. And uh, she, uh, she sat and enjoyed the view for a bit, and then we became worried about her strength, and uh, we um, asked her, uh, okay, mom, are you ready to go back to Portland as planned? Or maybe just perhaps um, would you be interested in seeing a little more out in the gorge? And <laughs> she said, east, go east. <laughs> if, if she were here today, she would be repeating that call, east, go east. This is, uh, there are too many hidden hidden treasures between here and Stevenson that deserve to be brought um, into the open to be appreciated by the public as this one now fortunately is.